continuing with the intrauterine growth restriction from our previous videos. In this video, we will be covering about the diagnosis and management of intrauterine growth restriction. First, how to identify IUGR? Identification is by screening. A simple method of screening is measuring the fundal height during every antenatal visit. If the fundal height is less by 4 weeks or more than the estimated gestational age, then IUGR can be suspected. For example, if the estimated gestational age is around 32 weeks, but on measuring fundal height we get only 27 or 26 weeks, which is less by 4 weeks or more. So, in this case IUGR can be suspected. Coming to the diagnosis, USG is done to confirm or to exclude the diagnosis of IUGR and in ultrasounds we see certain measurements which include fetal biometry which has a fetal biparietal diameter, head circumference, femoral length and abdominal circumference. The measurement of estimated fetal weight by ultrasound is the single best test to diagnose IUGR. For this the abdominal circumference correlates well for estimating the fetal weight. Also we see other parameters like head circumference to abdominal circumference ratio, femoral length to abdominal circumference ratio and pondral index. Also we see amniotic fluid volume. We see oligohydromnios that is decreased amniotic fluid volume in IUGR because of decreased fetal urine production. Also we can see the Doppler velocimetry. Abnormal umbilical artery Doppler characterized by increased systolic to diastolic ratio and absent or reversed in diastolic flow. So, increased systolic to diastolic ratio and absent or reversed in diastolic flow is associated with IUGR. This is for diagnosis of IUGR. Next is the management.
how will we manage if the gestational age is less than 37 weeks so before 37 weeks of gestation we just monitor the further growth of the fetus and we assess the fetal well being but before this we should exclude any major fetal malformations which can be associated with IUGR. So, we should monitor the fetal growth if it is before 37 weeks of gestation and also we assess the fetal well being. Coming to the medical intervention. Bed rest is advised to the mother in left lateral position which increases the utero placental flow. Next is the maternal oxygen therapy. We administer 55 percent of oxygen at 8 liters per minute to improve the fetal oxygenation and decrease perinatal mortality. Coming to the drugs, we give low dose aspirin 1 to 2 mg per kg per day, beta agonists heparin, calcium channel blockers, all these can be given. Next we also advise the mother to take high protein diet because one of the important causes is maternal malnutrition in most developing countries and underdeveloped countries and treatment of any associated maternal conditions like anemia, hypertension, etc. So, this is medical intervention. Next, once a diagnosis of IUGR is made, the fetal growth needs to be monitored. So, assessment of fetal growth. This assessment can be made either clinically or using ultrasound. The clinical assessment is by assessing the maternal weight gain and uterine growth charts measured weekly. And in ultrasound measurement, we see parameters like bipedal diameter, head circumference, femoral length, abdominal circumference, which are measured serially every 10 to 14 days. Now, next we should assess the fetal well being. So, assessment of fetal well being. So, this is to predict and prevent fetal asphyxia and thereby prevent fetal death. So, this is done by monitoring daily fetal movement count which is done in two methods. In one method the mother records the time taken each day to feel 10 fetal movements. So, usually the 10 movements are perceived in 2 to 3 hours 
and uh, if the mother cannot perceive 10 movements in 12 hours then the fetal movements are said to be reduced and one more method is the mother records the number of movements made by the fetus in one hour and this one hour should be after meal and at the same period of time every day so this is daily fetal movement count next is non stress test So, the non stress test we see the fetal rate acceleration, V to beat variability, any decelerations, basal heart rate, etc. A normal non stress test or a reactive non stress test is defined. When there are two or more Accelerations. Accelerations is when the variability is more than or equal to 15 beats, each lasting for more than or equal to 15 seconds in 15 to 20 minutes of time. So, this is normal or reactive non stress test. When this turns out to be non-reactive, further evaluation by other methods have to be done. The next will be biophysical profile. In biophysical profile, five parameters are measured, fetal heart rate accelerations that is non-stress test, fetal breathing. fetal movements, fetal tone and amniotic fluid volume. So, a score of 0 or 2 is assigned to each variable. The overall score of 0 is associated with acidemia, whereas the normal is 8 to 10. Coming to the obstetric intervention, if the fetus is not in distress, The pregnancy is allowed to continue till 37 weeks, that is till term. So, if it crosses 37 weeks of gestation, then the mode of delivery depends upon whether it is mild or severe IUGR. In case of mild IUGR, the fetus is not under distress, then labor can be induced and vaginal delivery is attempted. Whereas, if there is severe IUGR, then LSCS is performed with good neonatal backup. Now, lastly, what are the indications for C section in IUGR? So, C section is performed when the babies are unable to withstand the stress of labor. as in case of severe IUGR. Also C section is done when the IUGR baby has to be delivered preterm either because of maternal reasons or due to fetal compromise and other indications 
include any mal presentations. fetal compromise which is diagnosed during fetal monitoring or abnormal uterine artery doppler with absent or reversed end diastolic flow so these are all the indications for c section in iugr So that is all about intrauterine growth restriction also called as fetal growth restriction thank you